Thank you very much, Nathan, for that uh, introduction. And uh, Landry, thank you as well for your uh, very heartfelt words. I appreciate them very much. And thank you all for in inviting me to join you this evening as we celebrate milestones and present awards tonight in relation to the Sickle Cell Awareness Group of Ontario. Not only does this year mark the group's fifth year of raising public awareness of this debilitating disease, it also marks 100 years since sickle cell anemia first made its appearance in the medical literature, as Landry described. You know, in one sense, 100 years without a cure is a very long time, but research continues apace, and news about improved treatment is increasingly common. And just this week, I'm sure that many of you saw or read the reports out of Louisville and Pittsburgh about bone marrow transplants undergoing a quiet revolution. New research is easing the risks so that doctors can target more people with sickle cell. The ultimate quest is to allow transplants even when donors are not a good genetic mix. Right now, as many of you are probably aware, only 17% of children have a suitable donor, but that will soon change and change for the better. Similarly, we continue to be inspired by those whose profile and courage raises awareness and inspiration. Such a person, as you all know, was Sunday Apalabi, the brave young man who lost his battle with sickle cell over 10 years ago, and in whose memory seed of life was formed to later become the group. Such a person right now is Geno Atkins, currently at the rookie training camp of the NFL Cincinnati Bengals. He was born with sickle cell trait, which of course is not nearly as bad as sickle cell disease, but it makes him careful about taking care of himself and has made him a spokesperson. His father, Gene, was an NFL safety for 10 years despite the condition, and his son is hoping for similar longevity. There are others in this room whose profile may not be that of a star athlete or a celebrity, but whose dedication to coping with and finding a cure for sickle cell encourages us all. But whether it's family members, caregivers, or friends, we are all here this evening, as Larry said, because there is hope, hope for better treatment, and hope for an eventual cure. As someone, as, <coughs> excuse me, as someone who's been living with the effects of polio since I was three, I know that a cure for sickle cell anemia can and will be found as it was for polio. Development of the vaccine took place in the 1950s. And in the years preceding that, I'm sure the thoughts and the concerns of parents were just as grim as many might be today, wondering whether there would ever, ever be a cure for polio. But at the Connaught Medical Research Labs, finally a clean vaccine was produced, and the rest, as they say, is history. And in the decades since then, we have advanced from annual outbreaks around the world that affected as many as half a million people a year to one where polio has been virtually wiped out from the planet. And I have no doubt at all that thanks to efforts such as yours with the group and of the searcher, researchers being recognized here tonight that a similar outcome will be achieved for sickle cell anemia. Stem cell research and other genetic advances are offering exciting possibilities for the cure and the treatment of many diseases, including sickle cell. And if biotechnology is the new frontier of science, while Canadian researchers are among its most adventurous explorers. And so, in the name of the Queen, and as her representative here in Ontario, I congratulate you all on five years of commitment to beating this disease, and I congratulate tonight's scholarship and award recipients, and I wish you all every success. Thank you very much.